boys and girls, let's talk about Cinco de Mayo. Do you celebrate the 5th of May in your family? If you're not a Latino or a Latina, or you're not of that heritage, chances are that you don't. Even so, there's lots of interesting facts about the holiday that you may not know. Here we'll tell you a little bit more about Cinco de Mayo. You may not know these facts even if you do celebrate the holiday. Cinco de Mayo is Spanish for the 5th of May, which is when the holiday occurs each year, 5th of May. Some people think of Cinco de Mayo as Mexican Independence Day, but it's not Mexican Independence Day. That happens on September 16th and is a much more important holiday in Mexico than Cinco de Mayo. Let's see where Mexico is, shall we? Here's our big earth. Let's zoom out a little bit. Can't really zoom out. Okay, here we are up here in the United States and right down here below us is Mexico. That's where Cinco de Mayo come from, comes from. Here's a picture of the Mexican flag. Here's another little map of Mexico. This holiday is celebrating a victory, the victory of the Mexican army over the French army, which occurred on May 5th, 1862. This war was called the Battle of Puebla, Cinco de Mayo and the Battle of Puebla. The battle was called the Battle of Puebla because it occurred in the Mexican city of Puebla. At this battle, the Mexican army was outnumbered. France was also better prepared with weapons and better training. The French were invading Mexico because the Mexican government owed the French government money. Mm -mm -mm. After the Mexicans won the battle, the Mexican president at the time, this handsome man right here, Benito Juarez, declared it a day to always be remembered. Each year, Cinco de Mayo is celebrated with parties, festivals, races, parades, family gatherings, food, and dancing. They might be dancing to a mariachi band. There they are. They play beautiful music. So Cinco de Mayo is celebrated with parties and, and parades and festivals. The biggest party of all in Mexico happens in the city of Puebla, where the battle originally took place. Celebrating Cinco de Mayo is actually more popular in the United States than it is in Mexico. Can you believe that? More and larger celebrations take place in the US. And if you're looking for a place to celebrate, you might not look any further than Los Angeles, California. One of the biggest celebrations takes place outside of City Hall. Here we see some people playing with a pinata. That's right. Pinatas are popular in Mexico and you might play with the pinata on Cinco de Mayo. We would if we were here at school. Popular dishes to eat. Here we have some people gathering. They look like Americans, right? They look like they live in the US. Maybe, maybe not. Um, the food, popular foods to eat on Cinco de Mayo might be things like guacamole and chips, mm, salsa, tacos, rice and beans. Uh, there might even be some special drinks. And you might wanna try to make these dishes at your next Cinco de Mayo party. You might even wanna try to make something like this. I was very impressed when I saw this dip. The dip <laughs> has been made to look like 
the flag of Mexico. How cool is that? So Cinco de Mayo is just a fun day to learn about Latino heritage and history, to eat some good, yummy Mexican food, and to celebrate our Latino heritage here in the United States. I hope you learned a little bit more about Cinco de Mayo from watching this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Hi boys and girls. In honor of Cinco de Mayo, we're gonna show you how you can make two fun crafts at home. A sombrero paper bag and a spoon maraca. First, let's start with the sombrero paper bag hat. All you need is a grocery bag like this. You're going to open the bag up, start at the top, and gently roll the bag, folding it, folding it, and rolling it, until you're going to flip it inside out. You're not going to see any of the writing on the back. Keep rolling it, and then this last part, you're going to push And you're going to try to make it pointy at the top. Then kind of roll the edges so you have a grip. I need mom and dad help for this, but you want to shape it so it has a little point on top. And gather it like that. And a brim going all around the outside. You really work it until it resembles a sombrero. Now I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna paint it. Come on. Now the colors I'm gonna to use to paint my sombrero are gonna be red, yellow, and green. So I'm gonna paint the outside edge red, Trying to keep the shape, keep the shape of your sombrero. Grab it from the top. And roll along the outside as much as you can. Okay. the pointy top of your sombrero. So I'm going to just do some like green circles because sometimes sombreros have little pom-poms on them. Ooh, if you have pom-poms, boys and girls, you could glue them to your sombrero too. Do some green on the top. And then I'm going to use some yellow some yellow dots too. Make it fun. Colorful. Bright colors. Maybe I'll do like a line of yellow going along my outside. Ooh, I see. What does yellow and red make? Orange. That's dead. Okay. Looks pretty good. Maybe I'll do some red dots up here too. Okay. Now that I'm done painting my sombrero, I'm gonna let it dry in the sun. Hi, boys and girls. Now let's learn how you can make your own maraca at home. All you need are the following items. Two spoons, take out one of those 
Easter eggs that you still have lying down. Now you can choose whether you want to, if you have tissue paper, you can use that app to cover it. But if you don't, you can also just use a square of a brown paper back. Okay, let's get started. Take these things away. So we're not gonna use them just yet. Okay, let's first start with the filling of the egg, okay? You need something that's gonna make a sound. So I have rice, I have some popcorn kernels and pinto beans. And I'm gonna put a little bit of each inside my egg. If you don't have all three or you don't have a variety, you can just put one. So I'm gonna put a little bit of rice for that soft, shaky sound some corn kernels, and some pinto beans, okay? Don't put too much because you wanna leave room for it to shake around in there. Close it up. Prepare some squares of tape. And then prepare four, okay? Then you take your two spoons, fit the egg in between the two spoons. Oh, before we do that, stop. Tape the egg closed. Okay, there, okay. Now, fit it, whoa, slippery. It's a slippery egg. Fit it in between the two spoons like so and pinch it closed, pinch it tight with your fingers. Then tape the spoons to the egg. Now, if you're really excited and you just cannot wait to play with your rattle, you could just stop here. I'd maybe suggest taping it a little bit more, okay? Just to make sure it's well stuck together. We don't want all this stuff flying out. Or you could take some tissue paper and glue and put the tissue paper all around it like I did with this one. Or if you don't have any tissue paper, you could just take a brown bag and decorate it. I'm gonna maybe decorate mine with some dot markers. Red, what were the colors of the Mexican flag? red, white, and green. Okay, so I've kind of decorated my bag and now I'm going to wrap it around my egg. So I cover up that part. Take a rubber band, twist it around a couple times and voila! I have two different types of maracas. Both make fun noise. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> and that's how you can make a homemade maraca using spoons, a plastic egg, and some noise makers. If you like this video, hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe to our channel.